What is up YouTube? In this video, let's look at Docker and why it is important for data engineers. So there are many things you have to do as a data engineer. A lot of the times you need to write down code, you need to use different sort of packages from pip, you need to run SQL on some kind of uh, environment. So a lot of the times you need to write this code with a lot of these different dependencies in place. So uh, to name a few dependencies can be like having Spark installed in the right place for big data engineering, uh, even having Pandas to have smaller uh, iterations or transformations, uh, running SQL, maybe use Psycop G2, that's one of the libraries to use. Or uh, if you're running a complex machine learning model in your pipeline, you need to import um, maybe scikit-learn, or maybe some advanced frameworks such as TensorFlow or PyTorch. So in a sense, Docker is like a magic bullet here, which can resolve all these dependencies uh, being installed to run a software. First of all, let's try to understand what is Docker. So basically, Docker is a software that allows you to package your code with dependencies in form of images called Docker images. And then you can run this image anywhere, be it dev pro environment or a prod environment, it allows you to package your code and then run it into standard units called containers. So basically containers, you can consider them as a bag or a container that holds everything together, everything in place, such as code, dependencies, uh, any other installations, all together as a package, and then you can just deploy it anywhere and it runs. Due to this concept, there are key differences between how things were deployed in the past, like on a virtual machine or a regular machine, and then there's a different concept of using Docker to deploy your application. Specifically, in my experience, I've seen um, we keep different virtual machines for different um, environments like prod, uh, staging, or development. We keep them different. And then if there are multiple applications, for example, there's an Airflow instance, there's an API, we kind of deploy it as multiple containers within the same machine. Apart from that, let's look at a few terminologies and things in detail about Docker and the ecosystem behind Docker, right? So first of all, you need to consider there's um, a place called Docker Hub. So maybe you can call it as a marketplace for Docker. So all these multiple companies, bigger companies kind of make, build these images on top of Docker and then they deploy it. Uh, and as a developer, you can just use those images that exist, which are publicly available for you to use uh, with the right licenses, right? Let's look into like a small detail, right? You need to have a Python API in place and uh, you need all these different dependencies, dependencies or pandas and whatnot. So you can build your um, your own custom image on top of something, like an Ubuntu image, but then there are already pre-existing image you can try to find which is there in Docker Hub, right? So one of the key facts about Docker is that it works on a layer system. So images are based, built by layers and layers. So you can use an existing image and customize it and add your dependencies on top of it and then you can use it as needed, right? So that's the best part I find about Docker. Let's look at some simple terminologies. Uh, there's one Docker file. Docker file is kind of used to write down your Docker image, like components of the Docker image. It starts from like, hey, imp I wanna import this existing image, uh, copy my code from local to this machine, install these dependencies in the requirements file, these kind of steps you can uh, put in a Docker file and you build a Docker file as an image. The next step is after the Docker file then comes an image. Once you build a Docker file, you use a Docker file to kind of build the image. Uh, you have then image in place. So once the image is ready, it's, it's like a blueprint or a template. Uh, so image is not running at the moment. You can consider it as a CD or a disk. So it's not running at the moment, but then you can try to run it as a container using Docker. So one of the key things you need to understand that you need a container registry to push these images. So that's one of the other things like similar to GitHub, uh, you need to push your code, right? Any code you need to push on GitHub. For images, you need to push your images on a container registry. One is a, a one container registry which is publicly available is Docker Hub. There are private registries within cloud, Google Cloud has Google Cloud, AWS, they have their own registries where you can like push your images which can be used by other applications. So it kind of lives, not in, it doesn't live on your local, but it lives on a cloud or an environment where we can like just easily pull it in. So yeah, the next step is after the image exists in the registry or even local, you can, you can run the image with a few commands. Um, you can run the image as a container. So container is like a lightweight environment for your application to run, which is which has pre-packaged dependencies and your code. All right, so um, so now that we have looked into Docker and why it's important for any engineer's uh, toolkit, right? 
So yeah, let's look into a simple walkthrough how you can customize your data engineering workflows with Docker. So yeah, let's look into it. I've already published this as a blog previously. Feel free to check out the blog as well, but like I'm gonna do a simple walkthrough instead of writing code down because bro. So yeah, let's look at the structure first. There's uh, all these files in place. There's docker compose.yaml, there's run compose. Uh, uh, the first, let's look at the, uh, there are four key elements in the package we're going to build. There's package.txe, which is Linux requirements. Next is Python requirements, pick pa packages which, which comes under Python requirements.txt. Uh, there are other configuration files related to Airflow and Spark. It's like sparkdefaults.config, supervisory.config, and airflow.config. We're keeping them to run all these uh, libraries. The next is the main uh, Docker file which I went through. Docker is a layer based system, so we are already using an existing image, which is OpenJDK, which, uh, which is being deployed on top of Ubuntu, right? So, Open GDK and then we have uh, environment variables. Put these environment variables to run our packages and code. Next is Spark installation. We have the Hadoop uh, file. Uh, we kind of downloaded it in the right place. Then we configure the GCS because we want to use Google Cloud Storage to connect with Spark. And then we are doing the installation of requirements, uh, the Linux packages. And then we're doing uh, installation of the Python packages, which is the pip packages. After that, we are doing some simple command line tools installation, which is relevant to Google Cloud. So you can see in your works, your, so you can see from this, like it's it's heavily customizable. You can customize for your needs. After that, you're setting some configuration files, opening up ports, and then finally running the entry point script, which configures the Airflow DB and whatnot. And yeah, and then you're setting up the supervisor D config, which is the scheduler behind Airflow. As you can see, this is the whole uh, Docker file, which is a blueprint. So you can see this as a blueprint, all the dependencies, the code, everything is in place. Uh, you can use this to run any Airflow container. Now, is, this is now packaged. Once you run it, you create an image. Once this package, you can run it as a container. Uh, as a next step, you need to build this image. So it, it exists as a Docker file, but first you, you build it. So I give it a name and just build it uh, locally. Once you build it, you can uh, basically run it. So I kind of skipped the step where you push it to a container repository in this part. But the idea is this doesn't live locally. It actually lives in a uh, cloud container repository. And you can just pass that path and run it. So here I'm using the local path and local image name. Uh, and the latest is the version of the file. I'm passing some environment variables uh, which are needed to run a Google Cloud. Uh, I'm also passing a volume, we call it a volume mount. So the local folders are being mapped to the local folders in your local machine. So this is how you can just exchange, put up your code in, inside of this container. So yeah, as a final step, you run the doc, run compose.sh file, which is this one. So yeah, this is how the whole uh, installation uh, kind of works. Uh, so uh, using Docker for data engineering use cases is basically really important nowadays because you wanna develop and deploy your application very quickly. All right, so that's about it in terms of this video. If you gained value out of this, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot to push my content to people like you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.